so welcome to today. I want to get right to the point. We are talking about criticism. Can you think of a recent incident where you were criticized? Now think about that experience. Think about how you felt. What was that experience? Maybe you somebody said something that really just cut you to the bone and it hurt you. It was almost like someone stun gunned you. It was that painful and it was that sharp. What was that situation? So the more important thing here is, you know, someone threw out criticism, but then it had an impact on you. Think about it. What was it that you did? How did you respond to that criticism? Did you respond with defensiveness? Were you angry? Did you start to search yourself and question yourself? Oh, what's wrong with me? And, he, and just sort of go inward and implode and beat yourself up because you didn't measure up to this person's expectations? Well, I want us to think about criticism on a few different levels. I want us to think about criticism in the sense of where it comes from and what the motives are behind it. I also want to think about the impact that it has to us. And ultimately, today, I want to give you three tips for handling criticism. This is something that I, I feel very close to this particular topic because we can be on a path where we're doing something great, we're minding our own business, we are thinking in possibility mode, and boom, all of a sudden we get stun gunned with a critical remark or someone just coming against us and we feel like a balloon where the air has been let out of us. Well, how do you recover from that? That's a big question. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. You may hear my dogs growling outside my door. They are loose and they are playing around and they just chose my door to, to play around today. <laughs> okay, so here I go. I'm getting ready to get started. And of course, I have my signature nose itch that happens. So I'm going to scratch my nose. And now we're ready to begin. That happens every Monday. Every Monday my nose itches. It's crazy. All right. So I just want to make a few comments about criticism before we get into the details. I know that you want the answers. I know that you want that, hey, here are the three tips that you can do to deal with this now. And I'm going to get those to you. But we need to understand, we need to get some context around criticism and why it bothers us and how it impacts us. So. You know, I, I like to think about criticism as, you know, when it first happens to you, it feels like it's a mortal wound. It feels like we've gotten a wound and it's gaping open. We're vulnerable. We feel like everyone can see that wound and they're just looking at us in horror, you know, if there happens to be people around us. But there's something about criticism that, that leads us to feel like we are suddenly exposed or that we are less than, or that we are suddenly unworthy, or we're not valuable. Um, have you ever felt that? Have you ever, you know, have you ever felt that when someone has criticized you, where you just felt like you were wide open, almost like, you know, it could be the equivalent of standing naked in front of the whole world. Now, that's pretty vulnerable, and that's, that's how I would describe criticism in terms of you know, when it first hits you, before you get a chance to process it and before you get a chance to think about how it applies to your life and if it's true or not. So let me just tell you, you know, it. what happens typically when we experience criticism is it. it's almost like a virus and criticism will come and it will look for cracks and crevices to seep through in your spiritual armor. 
it will look for ways to get around your emotional strong points, uh, your mental fortitude, and your confidence. So it always looks for an angle. Now this may, you may think, gosh, Angie, that's pretty, uh, you know, what's the word? That's, hmm, I'm trying to think of right, the right word. That's maybe going overboard, you think? But really, criticism is this invisible, unseen, entity that looks for places to reside. It looks for a place within you to take residence and start to metastasize in you. And what happens is when criticism is allowed to stay and reside within you, the effects of that criticism, it does metastasize to all of your four personal pillars. Uh, these are the four personal pillars that I talk about in my book, Compose Your Soul, how to turn your daily chaos into calm control and you can get that on Amazon but it looks for places uh, to fit into your emotional pillar for example criticism looks to start to identify trigger points for you it will start making your emotional triggers much more sensitive on your mental pillar if you think about your mental pillar it's the way that you process things it attaches itself to the way that you process the world and the and the way your problem solving process so it's right there just like that annoying visitor who's following you along in all of your processes and basically tainting it um, from a physical standpoint if you think about criticism and when it first latches on to you if you notice that some of us we may have an immediate angry angriness or you know we might have an, an immediate uh, hot temper reaction to it like I'm or defensive you know like I'm not putting up with that or that's you know that's waking me up I'm angry so it, it attacks you that way and it causes the stress re response but it also after that wears down it drains you for some of us I know like for me it it's like that balloon and I deflate and I'm like oh man that just took the life out of me and then it affects your spiritual pillar because what happens with criticism is we tend to look at that other person and we want to start deflecting. We want to start deflecting back and projecting our anger onto them and say, well, they're not all that. Well, look at everything that they're doing wrong. So that impacts our spiritual pillar because in order for us to be effective in, in God's mission for us, we've got to be clear. We've got to be free of unforgiveness and we cannot be operating in a spirit of offense because it just sucks the life out of us and it's it's not where God wants us to go. So you see criticism, it's a, it's a pretty heavy duty virus that we've got to get rid of. And ultimately it leads to a filter. It filters everything that we do, how we act, how we think, how we speak. And ultimately, you know, it also leads us to feel like the world is against us when the world may not really be against us. So you see, it has all of these impacts. If you've ever felt this way, let me know. Have you ever felt this way? Have you ever experienced anything, any of these things that I'm talking about? Let me know. You know, I want to talk about, I, I want to just make this point because when I do this Facebook Live coaching, a lot of people say, oh, are you a life coach? Well, I'm a life coach, but I'm also an executive coach who works with women who are in the workforce, and you don't check yourself at the door. You're not a robot when you go into work. Yes, you want to maximize your potential. You want to uh, be, you want to make an impact at work, but ultimately, you're making decisions at work and you receive criticism at work and at home and in our relationships. So this is a multifaceted thing that just goes across all arenas of your life. And if you think about at work, when, we, when we're thinking about criticism at work, what, what is it that's challenged? What do you think is challenged in the workplace when you're criticized? I would challenge that um, your competence is is what's being attacked. Usually when someone criticizes us at work, we feel like someone's saying, well, you're not smart enough or you don't know enough or you're, you know, you, 
you just don't have it together here at work. So that's one aspect of it. And then when we think about at home, criticism tends to attack how we feel about our personal worth. And we feel like our personal worth is being questioned. And then just in relationships in general, what's being challenged is acceptance. When we experience criticism around our relationships with people, something else comes along with that, and that's a sense of rejection that we have to battle with. So you see, there's all these different, it's, it's not, this isn't just about your life, it's about work, it's about relationships, it's everything that you encounter. I mean, if you are a churchgoer and you go to church, I mean, so many people have left the church and stayed away from the church because they have just crumbled under criticism. And, you know, they, someone may have said something that was out of line and you took it personally. And so you left the church and said, I'm not going there. Well, I'm going to tell you that the church is a hospital. It's not a, it's not a place. It's not a networking place. It really is a hospital. So people who are experiencing brokenness and who have come through, come from painful places you know, that's where they go and that's where they show up. So sometimes what comes out of their mouth isn't what we expect because we expect this uh, perfectness to, to be there. And we know that we are only complete in Him. Uh, that's what brings uh, the bond of perfectness is when, we, when we're complete in Him. So what is at the heart of criticism? I thought long and hard about this and what really is at the heart of criticism from a natural perspective and what I came to realize is that it's comparison when we are criticized what comes out of that is this automatic need to compare ultimately when someone criticizes us we start looking at ourselves and we start comparing ourselves to other people. We feel like we're under attack, but it's because we feel like we're being compared to something. We're being judged against something. And sometimes criticism happens just that way. So that's, do you feel that? Do you experience that? All right, I'm going to take a quick pause here just to do a check on our on our Facebook Live just to make sure that everything is good. Doo -doo, let's see here. Yep, we are we're live. Very good. All right. So now we want to get to how do you handle criticism? Um I, I I'm going to think about myself personally um, on behalf of I'm well, actually, I think I'm going to use the example that of something that happened recently uh, to my daughter. My daughter is a very outgoing, extroverted young lady, and she is full of life. She's full of joy. She's funny. And not too long ago, she got together with some friends, and a girl that she wasn't really friends with uh, threw out a what I call a pot shot at her and, and said something, you know, criticized something about her. Well, it hurt her very deeply. And as a result of that, what happened is she started questioning herself and started, um, started worrying about herself. So, um, you know, that's how she handled it. When I get criticism, I, my initial reaction is, oh, I'm kind of defensive and, and angry and you know, I want to deny it. So I go through this process of I want to deny it and then I get angry about it and then I get depressed about it. So if you think about the grieving cycle, it's almost like I go through this accelerated grieving cycle. So how about you? How do you handle it? Well, I want to give you three things to think about, three tips to think about when you're dealing with criticism. And here is the very first one. First of all, recognize the difference between criticism and feedback. 
because there is a difference between the two. And I made a post recently about this. Let me pull it. Um, yeah. So I keep this in my journal. Everything that I talk about, these are things that I really think about and capture because they are so important. So when we think about feedback, feedback is really supposed to be a positive way to recognize when someone is being effective and recognizing where someone can be even more effective. And this is the feedback model that I use when I work with leadership and teams and my coaching clients. I don't focus on, you know, or even frame it up, well, here's what's wrong with you. That's just, it's not right to do that. But feedback is designed to identify how you're effective and how you can be even more effective. So it's designed to be helpful Whereas criticism isn't coming from that place of helping people to be more effective. It's really designed to hurt people. So it's so when it feels sharp and piercing, know that if it's criticism, then it's intentionally designed to hurt. So another difference between feedback and criticism is that feedback is uh, designed to empower you to to maximize yourself, to be a better version of yourself. And one thing that we're really charged with is, especially, you know, if you are a woman of God, you're, you're charged with continually working and growing to be Christ-like. And, and your feedback, the feedback that you get is designed to help you to get there and to enrich, enrich your lives. Whereas criticism what it causes you to do is to defend. And it, you, you see this, I mean, it puts you on the defensive instead of empowering you. It, tends, it tells you to put up those walls and say, oh, I, I just don't want to receive that. And, it, and so criticism is, causes you to put your hands up like defensive wounds. The other thing about feedback, which is more of this positive way of receiving information, about how you're showing up and how you're being effective is that feedback um, causes you to open up and to do more and to want to be more effective and to maximize your potential and your gifts. Whereas criticism, it simply shuts you down. It causes you to go in protective mode. You shut down and what happens is you end up not hearing anymore. And, and if you are the criticizer, then it will shut down that other person. So that is the very first tip. And I'm going to show this. I'm going to try some experiments with my stuff here. Yep, there we go. So ultimately, what's the first tip? How to handle criticism? First, distinguish between actual feedback and criticism. And you can, you can recognize that. It's very easy on, based on what I've said. All right, so now what is the second tip? So I'm going to share the second tip with you here. How to handle criticism. First of all, discern where it is coming from before you respond to it. So discern where it's coming from before you respond to it. Now, what does that mean? That means that when, uh, you know, when we think about discerning criticism, we have to recognize, um, is, this, is this coming from the person who maybe they're feeling insecure about their, themselves? Maybe this person is, they are, you know, in order to protect themselves, they're throwing something out at you. Maybe they're feeling insecure about themselves. So, I, you know, I'd like to say that that's that's typically what happens is a person, when someone is critical of you, it's something within them. It really has nothing to do with you. Now, I want to caveat this with the fact that there are people who their brains are wired to come across as more critical. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily trying to criticize you. It simply means that their brain is wired to look at the world from a critical perspective. So, uh, for example, I'll use my husband and I, I, I like using him because we have different perspectives on this and it's just simply because of the way that our brains are wired. 
Now, when I look at people, I, I look at people, I look at things in the realm of possibility and I like to recognize what people are doing well. Well, my husband, Aaron, the way that his brain is wired, he's, he is wired to look for things that could be potential problems and, and things that are not correct because it's his way of saying, hey, we need to fix this in order for it to be right. And it's not that there's any ill intent, it's just that's how he looks at it. Where now where it becomes personal and emotional is when you know it's a jab. You know, and you can distinct you can distinguish that by the way that someone shapes it up. So if uh, you know if if someone says, Angie, I don't like that red shirt. It drowns out your color. You know that could come across as something critical. Now, if it's meant with sharpness, they might use more flavorful words like "That is the ugliest shirt I've ever seen." And let me just tell you, it makes you look like a pig with lipstick. Now there is some heat in that, so you can tell the difference between the two. So you want to make sure that you're discerning what kind of criticism that is there and where it's coming from. So, um, and I'm going to tell you something else. You know, for those of you who are in the spiritual realm, you recognize that there are, you know, there's an enemy at work. And his job is to kill, steal, and destroy. And what he wants to do is undermine your confidence so that you don't want to speak up and do what your mission is and do what you're called to do. So sometimes that enemy will work through people that you care about and people that you don't care about. And you see that happening right now in social media. You see, you just see this very critical and hostile spirit working, and it's working through people. So sometimes, you know, if you're if you're really close and in tune with what your calling is and what your mission is, you know, the enemy's going to come in. He's going to try to separate you from that because he doesn't want you to be effective. So if he knows that you respond with emotion and hurt to criticism, he is he's definitely going to put somebody in your path to criticize you to just knock you off off kilter. So you have to be aware of that. You have to recognize that and know that you have recourse. You have the ability to dispute that. And you can, I, I like to use scriptures. I especially love going to Psalms 37, where the scripture says, you know, don't fret because of evildoers. Don't fret because of those people who are trying to tear you down. You know, instead, I want you to focus on these things. I want you to focus on trusting me. I want you to focus on committing your way to me. I want you to focus on resting in me. And I want you to focus on delighting in me to cease from your anger. I strongly encourage you to go look at Psalms 37. And it is, it is a perfect passage to be reading, especially if you've experienced some criticism. So, you know, here are some others for those of you who are scripture readers. Um, another one in Psalms 25 that says, Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed. For I put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on you. And then also Psalms 27 is a good one. Though a host should encamp about me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rises against me, in this I will be confident. You can combat that spiritual warfare with those scriptures. Now, if that's not your cup of tea, and let's say that you're like, Angie, you know, I'm not... I'm not a spiritual person. I don't, I'm not even sure I believe in God. Here's what I want to reassure you of, that positive, you've got to defeat negative thinking and negative comments with positivity. That much you can be sure of. So even if it's looking for a positive quote that combats that, you've got to speak life. You must speak life into what's true. What's true and not what's false. So here is, this is a big one. And if you got a pen and paper, I want you to write this down because I'm about to share something with you and I want you to chew on it for the rest of this week. And here it is. Truth mixed with anything else is not truth. So let me say it again. Truth mixed with anything else 
is not truth. Now, you can take that a bunch of different ways. You can take that in the sense that, you know, when someone says something about you, uh, you know how people always say, oh, there's a grain of truth and everything. Well, I strongly disagree with that. My position on truth is that you either tell the truth, it's, there, it's something that's either true or it's not true. It's either true or not true. So then I can take this in a spiritual realm, and so many people take, you know, they might take one scripture in the Bible and try to apply it, but they won't really apply the rest of the scriptures, and somehow that makes it truth. So, you know, God's word mixed with anything else is not truth. And we know that from the Garden of Eden, because, you know, that, that serpent came along, and he just added in one bit of, he just added one word to deceive Adam and Eve in the garden, and that made, you know, it just, he took the truth and mixed it with something. So make sure that you are not receiving that because truth mixed with anything else is not truth. All right. So now you're probably saying, all right, Angie, what is tip number three? Well, we are about to go to this. Let's go to the drum roll. Here we go. Tip number three on how to handle criticism. Respond with grace. And just as a reminder, in case you haven't forgot, check out Psalm 37. It's good medicine for the soul, especially when you've been stun gunned. Now, I want to talk about responding with grace because this is probably the answer that you're looking for. This is the thing where you're saying, okay, I want to know how to respond to someone when they come against me. And here's what I want to tell you. When, you, when someone is criticizing you, and you've already discerned, okay, this person is, they're criticizing me because they have something uh, working in them that is a struggle. Or, you know, maybe they're struggling with their own inadequacy. And so their way of helping themselves to feel better is to down other people. I and mean, that's a very common thing. I would say most criticism that comes from people comes from that place. It's not coming from a helpful feedback kind of place. So first of all, you have to recognize that and be able to discern that. And then process the criticism. So processing it means that you're going to have to apply an autoresponder to that person that you're talking to. So if they come against you and they, they are saying, man, you did a crappy job on that project. Well, that's criticism. And what you don't want to do is just spout back off and say, well, you're an idiot and you don't know what you're doing in your job. <laughs> That's not the right way to handle it. That, that creates a, a spirit of offense and um, it gets into this whole other mess of a root of bitterness and all this other stuff that you don't want in your life. It complicates your life and our goal is to simplify our lives. So when I say processing it and, give, and throwing out an autoresponder, it could be something like, um, I appreciate your feedback. I would like to take some time to think about that and get back to you with my response. Or it could simply be something like, hey, I'm not really sure how to respond to that right now, and you sound really angry, but I want to take this, and I want to think about what it means to me. And ultimately, you want to have an autoresponder where you can just simply show up with grace in the face of a big fire. So what is your autoresponder? What is it that you can say what is it you, that you can do simply respond with grace instead of hate now when what happens is this is the point when that criticism starts to want to look for those cracks and crevices within you it's looking for a place to reside so it can metastasize in your body and, the, and you need to stop this so you've got to just sit with it for a moment notice it and then you've got to start to reframe it. Okay, this is, the, this is the criticism that I got. Now, is it true or is it not true? And remember, truth mixed with anything else is not truth. I got that line from, from a wonderful friend from uh, many years ago, Brother Terry Woodham, who shared that with me. It was really powerful. It stuck with me forever. Um, so you've got to look at it and say, Okay, is it true? Is it not true? 
why is this person doing this? Let me think about, let me put myself in this person's shoes and see where they're coming from. So taking the time to work through your self-awareness and working through the awareness of that person, that's going to help to dissipate that energy that you felt when you initially got attacked. So one of the reasons for processing is just to go ahead and let that energy, that negative energy, work its way out of you so that you can look at it and and really recognize where it's coming from. So then once you draw your conclusion about that, no, this is not true. And so then your next step is, okay, well, what do I do with this? Uh, sometimes it's nothing. My favorite way of dealing with this is when I know that someone has criticized me or come against me, and that's happened plenty. You know, I, that happens to me all the time. I'm, I'm a public figure. I'm out there talking and coaching people and speaking, and I get criticism. But, uh, you know, the way that I deal with it is I simply just start praying about it and asking God to show me how to handle this. I start praying for the person who gave it, and I ask God to help that person. So you might be saying, hmm, well, okay, again, uh, maybe I'm not much of a prayer. But what I would recommend that you do is that you simply meditate on what the learning is in this situation. What is the learning for you? Your learning is to is to continue to maximize your own potential, but ultimately your job is to um, your job is simply to work out your own salvation, to work out your own you know, nobody else can live your life for you. And so criticism, when it's meant to hurt, your job is to simply just, instead of, I mean, if you think about, if you think about soccer, you know, we deflect, you know, we kick the ball away, but in some situations, we just want to pass it along. Okay, I'm, um, I'm going to pass along this criticism and just move it out of my way. Not that you're passing it on to someone else, but you're simply just you know, just going with the momentum of it, processing it, and saying, okay, so what value can I gain out of this, and how do I need to be uh, sending good vibes to this other person who's given it, because obviously they are not feeling good about themselves because they feel the need to criticize all the time. Now, there's another thought that may be coming across your mind, like, well, that's, that's pretty idealistic, but what if this person is a big bully? Well, that's a topic for another Facebook Live, and I talk about dealing with these bullies, there is a time and place to confront. So I never advocate that you run from a problem. I never advocate that you avoid conflict. But you have to make sure that in order, when you're to be ready to deal with that conflict with that person, you have to have authenticity. You have to have a strong foundation of self-confidence. And you have to be able to be resilient. So if you meet those three requirements, then you're ready to walk back in and confront that person. But if you're not there, then you've got some work to do and it might not be the right time for you to confront that. And that's what, you know, that's one area that I help. I, I have a big focus on helping women to build confidence and I have a big focus on helping women to get clear, you know, how to respond to these things, how to speak with a bold voice. So I do all of those things, and I do that in a variety of ways. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I also offer group events. We've got some women's circles that we're getting ready to start at the beginning of August. So if you're interested in those women's circles, let me know. All you have to do is go to my website, and here it is, Angie Nuttall Coaching at www.angienuttall.com. And you, if you go to the events page, you'll find out about the circles. And I'm, I'm going to be sending out more information about these as we go um, over the next few weeks. All righty. So I do want to give you, I think that uh, we're kind of thin on our group today. So that's, that's fine. As you watch this Facebook Live, if you have questions, even if we're not live, go ahead and post those for me. I'll come back and circle back and answer those for you. And... Uh, my wish for you is that you have a criticism free week. We know that those criticisms are going to come, but my wish for you is that you handle those with grace, that you be able to discern those and recognize where they're coming from 
And we also, uh, my prayer is also that you are able to distinguish between what is criticism and what is feedback. All right, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. Happy 4th of July. Celebrate your freedom. Love your friends. And be good. Give all praise to God. All right. Have a good one, everyone.